Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasika. Right now we speak about the state of boxing in the country and we are glad to be joined by Public Relations Officer for Boxing Association of Kenya, Dan Kankuria, who is also a former international boxer, also known as Sugar. Sugar, good to join us and good afternoon. How have you been? Uh, good afternoon, Maxwell. I'm good. The last time I saw you, it was before you went to Morocco Rabat for all Africa Games. How was the experience being there? Uh, it was a very good experience. We... We had a very short time to prepare our team for the Africa Games, but then we went and uh, participated very effectively. We competed against very competent teams and we were able to get five medals. And apart from the Games themselves, we also had an interaction with the AIBA president. So we are able to correct a few things with the administration of AIBA, which also helps in our, our relationship with AIBA. So I'm thinking so far so good. Do you think that was the best performance from Kenyan team? Because going by the 2015 Brazzaville results, it was three medals overall? No, in, uh, in, in Congo Brazzaville, we had only got two bronze. Two bronze. Yes, it was Nico Koth in lightweight and, uh, and Joey. Elia, Elia Joey. So they both got bronze and uh, they were both in the team that went to Morocco for Africa Games. Uh, I think the team, the team performed much better. I think the motivation, the, the guys were motivated, the morale in the team was very high. Uh, the president of the federation, Mr. Jamal, really motivated the, the guys because he was always there training with the boxers. And uh, he was able now even to motivate them in terms of uh, giving them allowances here and there, sorting small problems within the camp. So you are not really dependent on the allowances that are paid by the national, by the government. So I, I'm thinking that aspects of management is what now enable the boxers to perform much better this time because like i've always said it's the same boxers that were there before but this time the performance by the same boxers is much improved so i'm thinking the management aspect of it was very positive and it trans it uh, cascaded down to the boxing unit which was very good and we are thinking going forward with much uh, with more time to prepare especially for the olympic qualifiers i'm thinking we can we are going to perform much much better in future. Also, oh, Robert, while we were speaking about Adela Amruch and Court of Arbitration for sports ruling on FKF paying him his dues, there is also another pronouncement uh, from World Boxing Council, if I'm not wrong, on Fatuma Zarika's rematch. She was supposed to confirm her rematch against uh, Mercado by yesterday evening. I don't know whether this goes a long way in trying to ensure that you know, sanity prevails in boxing as a sport. I think uh, for Fatuma Zarika, she is in a very tough situation because for us, she's in the professional boxing place uh, uh, category. That, that's what is making her tough. And then you realize that her promoter and most of her activities have been sponsored by the betting company Sport Pesa. Now, the problem is the moment Sport Pesa pulls out of that sponsorship, she remains alone. She doesn't have any money that she's going to use for the training. You remember, the company was helping her pitch camp in England, get her most of her professional training in England, good equipment that she's going to use. But now, she will be alone with no professional coaches, no backup plan on how she's going to do for that much. And the title... If she confirms that she is going to fight, she might not be able to hold the fight here in Nairobi. She has to hold it outside the country, and that probability is the title might go away. When we're speaking about you know uh, promotional activities and sponsorship for boxing as a sport, I've seen several boxers, even Judy Wagudi, I know you know her, uh, trying to appeal to good sponsors <coughs> and Samaritans to come on board and ensure that uh, she fights so that she remains active in boxing and that has been you know a challenge do you think the sponsorship and promotional aspect of the game has been you know main undoing of the sport to grow i think it's one of the biggest challenges that we have in the sport uh boxing especially and i think across even even the other sporting discipline those have issues with yes. uh, sp sponsorship but now, for the first time, we had seen a lot of improvement in terms of staging big games in the country, yes. courtesy of the sponsorship that we're getting through Sport Pesa. You remember the, the, the fights that uh, Zarika had at KICC? They were funded uh, by Sport Pesa. And uh, the logistics of organizing a major title fight like WBC, yes. you know, they are massive. 
And uh, the risk that we stand is that uh, both Judy and uh, Fatou Mazarika, they can lose their titles because of not uh, being able to organize the defense here in the country especially. And you remember like uh, when Zarika won her title, it was against a Jamaica in America. And it was a surprise. They didn't expect she can win it. And uh, even after she won it, she never, she was not paid her money. So it's always advantageous when you have such a major fight, you hold it at home. Where the crowd is with you, you know, the, the, all the preparation logistics yeah. are much, much easier when you are doing a match at home than when you are away. But then now when it comes to issue of now even funding the preparation part of it, it becomes a serious challenge because, you know, you need a uh, proper diet to be able to prepare well for about you need the movement you need publicity there are a lot of things that need just to hold happen. your mic from the middle yes there is a lot of logistics that is involved in, in organizing such major fights and without sponsorship like what uh, sport Pesa was giving it will be a tall order you see now the challenge i find with our our government is now you do away with the betting company like sport pesa which is spending so much money in helping the youths who are involved in sports but then nothing comes in to, to fill the gap that has been left there's a serious void that has been left in terms of sports promotion across the country don't not just in boxing even in football yes. gormahia if the leopards will suffer the community clubs and uh, you see now if uh, we are talking about sports fund it has its challenges in terms of how it's ad uh, administered like now our national women boxing team is supposed to be in Russia for World Championship. Yeah. They were not able to travel because of funding issues. So it's, I think the government needs to really reconsider the issue of sports sponsorship and uh, the sport betting company because there is a serious void which they had come and uh, helped to fill. And uh, the, the future was very bright. But now when they are not there, I'm thinking it's going to be very tough. For the youth of this country. I, th I think I think the, the government is at fault, yes, but I think the major problem is also with the sports federations because the sports federations, one thing that they need to do is they need to come together. Past, past being boxing, past being football, past being volleyball and everything. They need to come together and come up with calendars. They come up with their own sports calendars, come up with budgets that in before financial year starts, they need to petition the government and tell them this is what we are going to do. If you realize that with all the government bureaucracy that is going on, if you come midway through the financial year and tell the government that we need 60 million for this and this, it will be very hectic for the minister and also the government to give you that money. So these sports federations, they need to know that in a year we have let's say five events prepare for the five events and present that budget early enough the government can consider it. because now the government at the moment the government is in a situation where even the sports fund itself was to be funded by these companies the the money that was go coming from these betting companies and all the other companies for csr activities now it is not going to be there so the government is actually has put itself in a situation where they need to also get into the budget level and make sure that they inject money into the sports activities now it will be very hard for sports activities to be funded which do not bring glory to kenya you and, and uh, sugar i know uh, mm. corporate confidence mm. is attracted by you know accountability and transparency of you know those who are at the helm of various sporting federations jamal uh, otieno mbok now is in charge of BAK as the president after the elections and uh, a few changes have been witnessed at the helm. Do you think what is happening right now at BAK can attract a close association with other stakeholders who, are, who want to sponsor and finance your activities? Yes, I think uh, how we are managing our affairs can give confidence to the corporate world. First, because uh, you, whatever small resources you have, the, uh, you must show how you are utilizing the resources and accounting for every coin that uh, you have. Uh, I like the way he's speaking, as if uh, he's, he's speaking for the government, because you know there are well, there are rules, there are regulations that which are supposed to guide how the how you apply for the funds. 
and every federation actually gives a calendar of activities yes. yeah. and before, before for every financial year yes you have planned a whole year yeah. and you have provided budgetary allocation for each event that you're supposed to participate in but you see now it's a problem when yeah. the that pot every yeah. sport discipline yeah. is supposed to fetch from, from that pot. the same pot so yeah. it's very difficult when so all it gets drained yeah, yeah. And, and it's not just federations even yeah. individuals yes yeah as mm. profession you know now with the sports act you can register as a professional athlete Person, uh, just as, as, as an individual, yeah. there's a requirement. There, there's a system for that. Yeah. And so there is no discrimination that uh, this sport does not bring glory to the country, so it can't be funded. Mm -hmm. There's there nothing, is nothing like, like smaller federation. No, there's mm -hmm. nothing like that. Yeah. So all of them are supposed a, to be given same treatment because a, all sporting no. discipline are supposed mm -hmm. to be funded from the start kit. Yeah. Regardless of if you are bringing glory or not, because glory is not part of the criteria for accessing the funds. <laughs> So I'm thinking, uh, the way you say it, there's a component where you say the federation are supposed to be accountable. The problem in, in this country is that a lot of federations have had wrangles. Yes. Yeah. And uh, wrangles are not productive to the sports at all because, if anything, they are, they are, that's what keeps away the corporate world and potential sponsors from coming to support the sports. Mm -hmm. So we think the... Uh, like a boxing federation, the way we are handling ourselves is attractive to potential sponsors. But we need to keep, you know, step up our game. We need to venture into marketing activities. We need to professionalize how we operate. Ideally, federations and even, and even sporting clubs are supposed to be professional such that they are able to generate some income to sustain themselves. At the moment, I think most of our clubs and uh, even federation, they entirely depend on funding from the government. Yeah, which is so, a major undoing also. Which is a major undoing. Yeah. So I think going forward, people, we, we need to see, how we come up with a model of how we can fund sports and we professionalize our clubs so that clubs are able to fund their activities. And I think that is a model which will be sustainable because now this one where everybody is looking at the government and the government has got so many other responsibilities to handle because it's not just sports that the government is handling. There are more challenging areas with their emergencies, their disasters, and the government, everybody is looking at the government. So we need to see how, as uh, probably the Ministry of Sports can see, can come up with a model of how respective federation and uh, sport, uh, sports clubs within the federations can be able to professionalize their activities so that they are able to be sustainable. They can be income generating. There are different activities that they can be able to do. Like what I have seen with football, they are trying with the club licensing to professionalize how clubs operate. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be depending entirely on uh, getting donations to be able to maybe honor your fixtures. But uh, you see now, like, like even in boxing, sometimes it becomes very difficult for clubs to attend league fixtures because they are not able to fund the, the, even the, movement to yeah. the tournament. The, the, the question I love because uh, traditionally, the major part between boxing and making money has been TV all over the world. You look at uh, the way TV and boxing associations work to try and get together and try to get promotions and get a big company behind them. You saw, I think, the fight between Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao, the days even from the Tysons and everything. For Boxing Association of Kenya, what are you doing considering that so that you can get, let's say, you start small so that people can start knowing that you guys are back and you are doing things differently. So what are the things that you are doing to try and bring that on board? Uh, I like that question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, we actually, I think for the short period, I, I think at the moment we are just about 93 days in office. Yes. And uh, within this short time, I think we've been visible enough. Uh, people in the country get to know exactly what is it that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, the performance that we got from Africa Games is a testament to the improvement and the changes that we have uh, implemented within the Federation. And mm -hmm. probably I need to correct you. Nowadays, we don't call Boxing Association of Kenya. We are Boxing Federation of Kenya, Kenya. Okay. in compliance with the Sports Act. So things have changed. Even the name of the federation is BFK, not yeah. BAK, okay. like mm -hmm. it was before. Yes. But uh, I agree with you. Uh, the component of marketing and visibility through TV yeah. 
is one of the key area that we need to work on. But at the moment, you know, in amateur boxing, it has not been very vibrant. So we've not had uh, a scenario where even league matches are being shown live on TV. Yes. But uh, in professional, it has worked very well. There's a model that uh, the International Boxing Federation has tried to introduce, which was, uh, you know, trying to bring an, a component of professional boxing within amateur boxing. Yes. It was called uh, WP, the one who okay, no, we were playing. Yes. Uh, WPB. So it's, it didn't work very well. At the moment, it's not, it's not working. It has failed. But they're, th they're saying it's because the thing is because uh, how the whole concept was thought about was not the best and uh, the funding of the activities also had challenges and they are, it, it made the F International Federation to incur a lot of debts yeah. in terms of how they were to fund the activities and some agreement that were entered into between some company from China yeah. and uh, a former director of the International Boxing Federation but locally, we have not tried yet, but we are making our effort to be seen, to be vibrant, so that the country gets to know what is it that within boxing we are trying to do. We are coming, we've come up with the concept of boxing machinani. Uh -huh. We want to take yes. boxing to the grassroots, to the county level. Yeah. We believe uh, we are trying to implement the... That's also partnering with the counties. Yes, Sports yeah. Act, yeah. because sports is a devolved function. Yes. And mm -hmm. we are thinking at the grassroots level is where we need to be felt most, because mm -hmm. that is where we are generating the talent. Yeah. So what had happened is uh, we between ar from around 1990 up to maybe 2000, where we are now. Yeah. Boxing just started going down when we come. We came up, the government came up with the program of structural adjustment programs, where... Yeah. Boxers who had been recruited into state corporations were basically employed because of their talent, not mm -hmm. because of their educational credentials. Yes. And uh, when now issues of uh, structural adjustment program came in, they started retrenching officers who were employed by different corporations who didn't have proper academic papers. Yes. And sportsmen were the first ones to be kicked out mm -hmm. with retrenchments. So what happened is that those clubs which were at the grassroots level, most of them ended up dying out. Uh -huh, yes. So we are not generating enough talent yeah. at the grassroots level, but the ones who are at the top level, yes, they, you know, normally what happens is that the, the local clubs produce the talent. Then the top clubs like Kenya Prison, Kenya Police, KDF, yeah. they recruit them yes. into employ employment yeah. in their respective uh, jobs. Yeah. So what happens is that we never invest back into <coughs> nurturing this talent at the grassroots level. So yeah. we need to reactivate mm. those cells uh -huh. where this talent is produced at the grassroots level yeah. so that we are able to have depth at the national level where we, we make the league to be very competitive <coughs> through having as many clubs participating within the county first because we need to organize a, tourna uh, a tournament to select a county team to participate in the league. Yeah. So you have a championship at the county level. Then when you're organizing a Kenya Open, you yeah. know, you have different counties. For instance, within the Boxing Federation of Kenya, we have 19 counties. And that is, that is inclusive of KDF, Kenya Prison, and Kenya Police. So if we have those 19, they all have a team which they have, they have selected sele competitively. Yes. Then you have a championship involving all those teams. And we are assuming this te all the teams have full team. A full mm -hmm. team in boxing has 10 members, 10 boxers. Mm -hmm. uh, and it should be 10 for men and 10 for women. At the moment, uh, when, it, when it, com it comes to the women's side, we have few. But it's much better than it was three, five years back. Yeah. Most I women are coming out now to join boxing, which is very good, I think, for the moment. Because we need to invest back in the women boxing. Because even at the international level, we are seeing... They are trying to introduce what you call gender parity in boxing. And for the first time in these Olympic Games, we are going to have 100 women participating in boxing. Mm. During uh, box, it may be member, I can educate the members of the public that women boxing was introduced at the Olympic level in 2012, London Olympics. Yes. And we had only three weight categories, flyweight, lightweight, and middleweight. Mm -hmm. and then in the, the same applies in the Rio Olympic Games where we still had the three weight categories and 36 female boxers but now going forward what has happened uh, at the international level is that they have killed two weight categories in men where 64 slots which were for men now have gone to women 
So we are going to have a total of uh, 286 slots for boxers and 100 among those are going to be women. So uh, we are seeing it's an area that yeah. we also need to pick up on. Yeah. Uh, as we have, we have brought in the issue of women and gender and everything is going well and we have discussed the challenges from the federation level, from the international level. What I think people want to understand, Golbi, what is that challenge a boxer faces personally? Because I think that is one of the major challenges that we have for boxers. Because this club that I, I grew up in Nakuru, and Nakuru Railway was one of the biggest cl clubs that we had for boxing. And you used to back go to Madison day. Square. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one of the biggest things that we had. We, we had also Nairobi Railway Club, was one of the big Mombasa. I think I'm also Nyanyuki. Th those were some of the biggest clubs yes. that we had for boxing. And right now, what is that challenge that a boxer faces that sometimes they give up? They don't want actually to go back and play the game. Uh, thank you very much for that question. The biggest problem that the boxers have is to earn a source of livelihood yes. through the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody will come, you know, because, you know, I believe boxing is the toughest sport in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, its training is very tough. Mm -hmm. So a boxer, somebody will come to the gym each and every day. First, they also have challenges with equipment. Uh -huh, yes. You come to the gym, you don't have boxing gloves. There are no bags. You know, we just train, uh, you know, maybe running around, doing shadow boxing. Yeah. But you require to have the boxing equipment. Uh, basically, you need gloves uh, for sparring. Uh -huh. Then you have uh, pads and the, punch, uh, the punching gloves to, do, to punch the the pads yeah. we need a bo uh, we need a punching bag and gloves to punch the yeah the bag then you need a bit of skipping rope so that you are able to jump the ropes where maybe it's part of the exercise regime in boxing yeah. so once you have those equipment uh, and you train now the biggest challenge is now what do you get out of this sport uh -huh. after you come you know you are, you are spending so much time in training but then at the end of it you don't earn anything back yeah and that's why you see now, like, the boxers who are employed maybe in the forces, uh, KDF and Kenya police, are the ones who are doing so well. Yeah. Because they are assured of an income at the end of the month. They have a salary at the end of the month yes. to sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's become much easier for them yeah. to box. These are the ones where we have maybe these uh, self-sponsored clubs. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you will get. Yeah. You just come for training, you, you train so much, you spend so much time preparing for a tournament. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even go for those tournaments because your club cannot be able to fund yeah. traveling to a championship. Yeah. Uh, when you go, maybe when you have a league, we have a league uh, tournament, there is also some participation fee that is paid of 2,000 yeah. shillings. Per boxer? Some, no, per club. Per club. Sometimes okay. some clubs cannot afford that amount. Yeah. So those are the small challenges that a boxer will encounter. And sometimes it's discouraging because everybody wants to improve their livelihood. You yeah. want to live a better life mm -hmm. than those who are there maybe before you. And uh, sometimes you see that, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you even, you know, you are, you are at the national team level, you are representing your country. Sometimes you come back without having been paid those allowances. So when you go back, somebody thinks because they saw you on TV, you have a lot of money. Yeah. And you are empty, your pockets are empty. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the discouraging things that uh, in the sporting fraternity, mm -hmm. because I only say those are just bo those are just things that I encountered in boxing alone. But even in these other sporting disciplines, you there. encounter the same. My so, so, so f before Sora asks you another yeah. question, for the first time in the history of the sport locally, the two men who are at the helm of uh, the leadership of that particular discipline of course professional kenya professional boxing commission now ruben dolo former member of parliament and he has also been actively involved in the management of the sport at international level and jamal who is also a former boxer being in charge of amateur how are you working together how is the partnership for the growth of the sport uh ideally we need to have a very good working relationship because in the, in the amateur ranks, that's where somebody gets experience of boxing. And uh, there's a provision in the, even in the statutes in the boxing, uh, in the boxing wo amateur boxing world, where when you get to 40 years, you are not able to continue boxing at the amateur level. You need to do maybe retire or go to professional ranks. 
but uh, in an ideal setup, I believe once somebody has represented Kenya at the Olympic level, I don't see why you should continue being in amateur ranks trying to go for three or four Olympic Games when you can be able to go to professional and be able to earn some money out of your talent. So, in the past, we've had a very bad working relationship between the amateur ranks and uh, professional. Because, you know, the, the, those who were in the leadership helm at that time, they were seeing it as if it's a crime for an amateur boxer to associate with a professional boxer. So, we fi you find now, because of that hostility in terms of the leadership, most boxers were not turning professional at the right age. Most, in fact, even up to now, most of our boxers overstay in the amateur ranks, in my opinion. Because you find somebody who is more than 30 years old, around, around 35 years old, that's when you want to turn professional. Did boxers like Gisharu play pro? No, he didn't. No. But uh, he, he participated in the, uh, the, one, the, one, the one that is organized by AIBA for about two, two to three years. That's part of a professional, but Okuri is now in professional ranks. Yes. But you see now, when you look at their age, they're not in their 20s. They're all in their 30s. But you go out there, you find boxers who are young enough. Like, for instance, I'll give an example of a boxer from Cuba. He's called Ramirez. He's 24 years old. He has won two Olympic golds, and he has turned professional. You know, you have a bit of years to be able to make money in the professional ranks, participating at that level, at highest level. The problem is when you turn professional when you are more than 30 years old, you know, that's the mileage, late for you. that's late. Yeah. You, you, when you get a younger boxers from abroad, it will be a tall order for you. Just like you look, I know, I know you follow football so much. It's not very easy for a top club to sign a player who is over 30 years old. Yes. And where he, such a player... Unless you are exceptionally unless talented. Unless you are exceptionally talented and you are also not going to get many years in your yeah. contract. Mm -hmm. It will be yeah. maybe one year to be extended at the end of it. So there is a serious challenge in terms of our boxers trans, uh, transiting from amateur ranks to professional ranks. But now with the new leadership, I think we can improve that. Uh, Ndolo has been in boxing for a very long time. Jamal has been in boxing for a long time. Somebody like me have been boxing for a very long time and uh, we are working together with them. We are able to advise them how we need to, to arrange the whole transition phase where a boxer who has participated at the national team level, we don't need to keep them so much within the, pro the amateur ranks. We make them transit easily to professional. Again, we, I think there's something that has been worked on with the, the office, the, the Professional Boxing Commission office, that uh, I don't know whether I would say they were, they were not elected back. They had an election which had issues. So the office that was there tried to organize with the Kenya Defense Forces to allow their boxers also to turn professional. Because that was another challenge that was there. Is that a lot of is boxers? Is it not about an individual decision? It has to be negotiations. Yes, it is an individual decision. But you also have to respect that these people are employed by those respective organizations, and uh, the reason why they employed you is to participate for them in the national league. Ah. So, for if you want to go professional, you need to get approval from your work. So that's that was a challenge, but which I believe. Uh, the head of the boxing team in uh, Kenya, Defense, uh, Kenya Defense Forces, Kanolo Mungori, was able to work with uh, the leadership of the military, our military, our military KDF, and they have work, uh, they have come up with an agreement that uh, the boxers in KDF can be able to transit to um, to professional ranks. And I think that is a very good step towards enabling our boxers to be able to participate in the professional ranks easily. Because if somebody now, if somebody tells you that because you're employed within this organization, then you're not able to participate in professional boxing, somehow they are curtailing your career progression. Or I don't know how, because now when you're military again, now you have a different career in, in the military. But now this is a talent that you use to get that employment, and that's what actually they do most of the time because our boxers who are in the forces, most of the time they are on release doing boxing. That's what they know best. So so before we wrap, I know Zoro Robert had some question before I let you go. No, for me, I just wanted to say if you can 
is there hope for the future? Because you are young in office at the moment, you are young, you are trying to put your things in order. Is there hope for the future? There is tremendous hope, <laughs> very high hopes, because the new leadership has come up with a lot of ideas on how to improve the livelihood of the boxers themselves. We need to prepare them also for life after boxing. That is something that has never been done before. So you'll find most of our boxers, they don't live very decent lives, yeah. especially after they have participated in boxing for a long time and brought a lot of glory to the country. Sometimes you meet them out there and you feel like running away. Yeah. So we need to see how we can also be able to take care of them. After somebody has done a lot of service for the country for very many years, uh, when, during their, when they have retired, I think we can find a way of helping them also to give back. We have, uh, we are, like I've told you, we are doing box, uh, Dondi Mashinani, where we are taking boxing back to the grassroots. We think it's an opportunity to be able to use the former international boxers who have retired to be able to go and uh, nurture talent within those clubs. So we second them to different clubs within the counties so that they are able to tap the raw talent that is available at the grassroots level. And that way I think they will be able to help them because well, if we keep you in a club and we have a stipend for you at the end of the month, at least it keeps you going. Other than being loitering around waiting for a handout somewhere, I think that's a way in which we can be able to help our former internationals who are retired to be able to give back to the sport and also improve the quality that is being produced at the local level. But uh, on top of that, we also need to organize a lot of coaching courses. We have a serious challenge in terms of uh, the level of certified coaches available in the country. Uh, mo like most of the clubs that you're talking about in the counties, they don't have coaches who have attained like IBA Star 1 ranking. And uh, you need to understand that the national level team, national team level is only Star 3 that is able to handle national team. And at Star 3 level, I think we only have uh, about 7 in the country. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in terms of also officials, the referee and judges, we have another big problem because we only have one star two and uh, a few star one. Now star, the, the one who is star two is the one who now is in charge of the referee and judges. And, is, and you see now, like for instance, the Africa games that we were participated in, in, we participated in Morocco, the minimum requirement for an official to officiate in such a games was star three, which you don't have. The whole country. The whole country. Wow. So of course. we have a serious challenge and I'm thinking we can be able to use some of those former boxers to be able also to do these courses for referee and judges so that we have adequate resources within our counties. When you organize a tournament, maybe if it's Kisumu, you are able to have officials within Kisumu officiating such a tournament rather than having to use funds to transport officials from Nairobi to come and officiate a small tournament in Kisumu. It's not very helpful considering that you are saying most of our clubs don't have adequate resources to be able to fund the activities throughout the season. Always a pleasure speaking to you, Dan Kankuria, uh, Public Relations Officer and Communications Manager for Boxing Federation of Kenya. is also a former international boxer joining us to tell us the state of boxing in the country and the progress of the current regime led by Jamal. But you know, always a pleasure speaking to you. Probably next time we shall create a whole show so that we can talk about boxing in our bid to restore the lost glory of the sport. Thank you for coming through and all the best. Thank you very much. Of course, that has been State of Boxing. We we'll take a short break and of course the guru joins us on the set in a few minutes time that is uh, Paul Bitok the acting coach for Malkia Strikers and former national team coach for Rwanda don't go away stay tuned <laughs>